have a duty towards the preservation and the propagation of the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Indeed, one of the best ways to work towards the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala faraju sharif is through promoting the values of Karbala. Imam Hussein Media Group is the only Shia television network that broadcasts globally in five different languages, Arabic, Farsi, Turkish, Urdu, and English. We are appealing to the lovers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam worldwide to support the channel such that it may continue its global operations. Imam Hussein Media Group is seeking 1,000 partners to pledge to a 14 pound contribution per month. This will allow the channel to sustain its operating costs as we continue to spread the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in multiple languages across the globe. You be a part of this great legacy and donate today. You can pledge in two ways. www.imamhussein3.tv slash donate will take you direct to our donation page where you can pledge monthly. Or you can call or WhatsApp us on 00 4-793-991763 Imam Hussain TV, your gateway to Karbala. Appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV3. Welcome to the late night show with myself, your host for tonight and many nights, hopefully, over the next couple of weeks. Now, tonight's show uh, is a bit different, uh, and tonight's uh, uh, actually, this show is, is quite different um, because not only do we have a guest, but we're gonna have some fun and games with the guest. Um, we're also gonna have a bit of a news segment, we have some community news as well. So, there's a lot going on today. So, sit back, relax. Please have your chai or your tea or your chai karak or your um, whatever beverage that you like to drink at night. Please have that ready. Sit back and relax and welcome to uh, a night of entertainment, but as well as a night of inshallah, something that we can learn um, from tonight's guest. Tonight's guest, actually, um, I should mention, is a very much a, a, um, a, a familiar face within Imam Hussein TV um, 3. Um, he's the presenter of Ahkam SOS. Uh, has a degree in biomedical science and is currently finishing off his hausa. I'm going to ask a bit more about that, I think. Um, but uh, he's working for Imam Hussein TV. Um, not only does he work for Imam Hussein TV, but he's also involved in the community, holding workshops and teaching and assisting in charity work as well. So please do help me in welcoming Sayyid Mohsin Shah to my chair. Sayyid Mohsin. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you okay? Thank you, sir. Please, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Say it. Um, lovely to have you on the show. Lovely introduction. Anyone Thank you who very I'm, much. I anyone who I've spoken to um, about you have always said that he's always got a smile on his face. <laughs> yeah. um, he's he's always up for a laugh. Um, he's always uh, ready to share knowledge. Mashallah. Um, so a bit back about, about your background, but before that, actually, I've seen you probably about seven years ago, um, okay. before I knew you that working for the channel. Uh, I walked into a restaurant that was recommended to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a yeah. um, it was a steak steak house indeed, steak indeed. restaurant. You um, came with your your missus. I came with my missus and my in-laws. Yes, yeah, I remember. good memory. Um, and you ordered chicken nuggets. You, <laughs> did I? Yes, you did. <laughs> Why did I order I mean, chicken nuggets? You said you weren't a big eater or something. You were like, oh, I'm not really a big eater. I've had something and like. You're, you said you told me before as well. You always eat little things. You're not, you're I'm like not a, a fan yeah. of steak. I'm not. I'm just mm. not a fan of, of 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 that much that much food. I'm not really a fan, and I and I just love sticking to my normal, like not normal, but like just small portions of of things yeah, like like know. nuggets and mm -hmm. chips and just really baby food for me is just amazing. Um, but yeah, no, no. I walked into the restaurant. You didn't give me a discount, by the way. At the end of the day, so I'm gonna you keep didn't that. pay the bill. <laughs> I didn't. No. No, you didn't. I remember <laughs> it very well. <laughs> Good memory. So yeah, let's, tell us about that. How, how, how did that work out? Uh, so um, my family, uh, we have a couple of businesses, more than one. Uh, and this was just a new venture that we wanted to go into. 
Um, so we found the property uh, in West London in Hounslow. Um, convert so it was an old pub. Okay. Yeah, it was an old pub, so we converted it. Did you it. give it a full rinse? Yeah, yeah, we oh, had to. Okay. The whole show, we turned turn it down to the bare minimum. Yeah. Like, and put new tiling in, we put in a new bar, we put in all these new tables and chairs and all this decor mm. and everything. Mm. We ran it for about four years. Um, and we, the thing is, this is back before all these burger places started opening and so forth. Okay. So at that time, it was all about dessert parlors. Mm. They were popping up left, right and center. You know, people mm. were on that vibe or that fashion. Yeah. So we were trying to go a little bit ahead and try a steakhouse, which hasn't been done yet. Oh. At the time, I think there was only one steak. There was two. There was one in East London. It wasn't even a steakhouse. It was just a restaurant that offers steak, halal oh. steak. One in East London and there was one in South London. That was a proper steakhouse. Oh. And that was it. So we okay. thought, right, let's open up one. Open one up so what's happened London. to it now? We sold it in 2015. Oh, okay. So we ran it for four years. We got a really good offer for it. And know. we thought, okay, do you know what? Like, do you want to continue or should we sell it? And to be honest, it was so much time consuming. Really? Listen, listen, check this out, yeah? Wedding happens, I can't go. A funeral happens, I can't go. Muharram, we have to take shifts on which measures we can go, where wow. we can go. And so, it was just so time consuming. It was just like, do you know Do you what? reckon that's the same for most business owners as well? I mean, the, the time it that depends. they have to spend it, it, their own business. You know, yeah, yeah, 100%. Mm. The first three years, you're not, you're not seeing much social work. Really? Life. Yeah. You See, if, if you're going to open a business and it's a nine to five business, you're like an estate agent or... Anything to do with admin and things like that. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. You know, you can do it. But if you're going towards something which is like non-social hours, then you know it's very very okay. difficult. Cool. All right. Cool. 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 So um, we're going to spring this on you. If you look at your screen over there, yeah. um, that's a picture of of of, of you at the rest. Yeah. It's it's, it's 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 a picture of you at the rest. Wow. Look at that, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> but with all seriousness, that's, that's actually a photo that we've dug up from about seven, eight years ago. Yeah, um, um, yeah so it, 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 did you have fun there? I mean, I know, I know of course. Was, I, I it, was, it, was it a passion? Um, yes and no. Um, it was really, really tiring, but would I do it again? 100%. Really? What I learned from, from running that business is phenomenal. Like, like what? Where do you want me to start? Give us an example. Corporation tax, VAT. Oh. Yeah. What's that? What's that? Tell corporation me. tax. Corporation tax is twenty percent of your profits you have to give to the government. All right, fine. I mean, if some, someone so, someone that does an Akam show. Yes. Um, how did you How did you work the two out? Like, was there a bit of dodging here and there? No, no, no. I mean, you have to be uh, clear because at the end of the day, they come and visit you. You know that. Who? The, the tax uh, office. Okay. The tax office yeah, will yeah. come and visit. The tax your man property. comes over. Okay, cool. The tax man will come here unannounced. Really? Yeah. And said, so give us some money. Think, if they think something's going on. Mm. Like you're giving in false information or you're not declaring what you should be declaring. Mm. 100% they're going to launch an investigation and it starts off by they sending people saying, all right, he's saying he's making this much. We think he's making more. Mm. Go on Friday night, see how busy he is. Oh, okay. So any, any guest uh, could, be ten could potentially be... A Definitely. The way they do it is like this. They'll send someone, they'll go and they'll make an order or whatever and they'll ask for a copy of the receipt. A week, two weeks, three weeks later, a month later, whenever the tax man comes, he will come and he pull out that receipt. Mm. And he said, like, show me that receipt in your data, in your records. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how they do okay, it. Okay, cool. So look, your journey, your journey is taking you from opening up a restaurant. Yeah. Um, and then, so when did biomedical sciences come into this? Before. Before it, yeah. right? Okay, so you went from biomedical sciences I'm to opening up a restaurant. Look, believe it or not. <laughs> well, 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 the, the white hair threw me off. Yeah. But the, the, you went from biomedical sciences to restaurant. How, yeah. how comes? What, why, why biomed? Well, biomed, like, I was good at science, uh, GCSE and A-level. So my dad was pushing me to become a doctor. Yep. And and so <laughs> the, the route was biomedical sciences? Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't get into medicine. So the, the route was biomedical science. But while doing biomedical science and studying with people from a variety of backgrounds and so forth. Um, but medicine wasn't for me. And I saw people, in my, my classmates and stuff, they were so much more deserving of it than I was. Oh. Uh, my friend, my co um, he was, check this out, right? First of all, he's from Leicester, so he's living, uh, he's living down south. So I went to Kingston University. So he's living in South London. He's going to lectures three oh. times, four times a week. Oh. On top of that, he's got a, a part-time job to earn some money wow. at a call centre. On top of that, he's doing um, voluntary work with a disabled child. Oh. Simply because that's what it takes to get into medicine. And on top of that... Really? Yeah. And once I was staying at his house, because we had exams and stuff like that, and we were revising, 
And he would every night he spends two, three hours going over his notes and preparing for the next lecture. And you weren't that committed? No, no way. And when I, was, when I saw what, what it took and the dedication he had, I was like, I don't even deserve to do medicine. Why? Because I wasn't as dedicated as I didn't have. I was yeah, no, why, 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 why weren't you dedicated? I mean, you were in the course, you could have taken the course towards I think, I think it was because I, biomed was forced upon me, not something I wanted to do personally. Okay. Um, maybe at that time I was looking more into law. Okay. Uh, or maybe uh, history or something like that. Now, being involved in media, I'd definitely take cinema, cinematography or media studies. All right. That okay. Really and if you could, if so, I was just about to ask, if you can go back, what kind of conver if you can go back, knowing what you go, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. and speak to your parents 10, 15 years ago, what would you say to them in terms of the whole biomed stuff? YouTube money. <laughs> <laughs> really? I would have been YouTube hands down. Yeah. But yeah, um, media. Uh, I would have said that. Look, media is the future. Uh, especially with the digital age, with the introduction of not just YouTube, but you know, likes of Netflix, yeah. Amazon Prime, and yeah. so forth, yeah. uh, we see a shift from analog to digital, from digital to streaming, oh. and you know, on demand and watch when you want. And people are actually running out of programs now. Okay. So there's a massive demand in the media market for you know producers, scriptwriters, actors, um, cameramen, everything. The whole uh, industry is just booming right now. And so, how significant is Ramadan? So right now we're running the Ramadan food campaign throughout Ramadan. Now this is our third year doing it. Oh. First year, Marshall, we managed to raise money to have a thousand baskets given to these impoverished families. Last year, we managed to do five thousand baskets. So inshallah, this year, you know, with, with the help of uh, you know our viewers and, and also uh, people who are in, uh, for, familiar with the channel cool. and familiar with the charity, we can and hopefully reach ten thousand food baskets. So on uh, again, if you look if you look towards the screen, there's a bit of a promo that you did outside. Yes, yeah. yes. Talk us through that. Why? Why? why, why so, the supermarket? so the idea was this: um, rather than having um, you know loads of backstage footage and background footage of warehouses and so forth, um, we wanted to show the people what comes in the food basket, and it's everyday groceries. So we thought about going to the supermarket, we're able to show. Um, first of all, they've got all the groceries and all the items yeah. that we normally give in the, in the food basket. Yeah. But on top of that, it gives a visual uh, indication and a visual idea to all the donors right. what each family is getting. But outside supermarket or a supermarket mm -hmm. in the UK or in London, is that the same items that the guys in, in, in Iraq would receive? Yeah. Exactly the same? I, I, almost identical. For example, the, the, like I picked up a bag of rice. Those rices are from Iran. Oh. You know what I mean? And I picked the, like, um, the fruits and vegetables that were very popular. Fruit and veg for, for example, your OBG, yeah, turnips, yeah, 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 so they're yeah. very popular in Iraq. Okay. Lentils, um, you know, and then your standard sugar, oil, salt, yeah. dates, lemons and things like that. Okay, moving on, um, your path takes a bit of a zigzag, uh, <laughs> I would say. I mean, you start off biomed, then you open yeah. up your own restaurant, and mm -hmm. um, now you know, you, you also on the side, or I don't know if this is, this is something that you do kind of full-time or part-time, depending. Um, how's it? Yeah. How, how, how do you, how do you, how do you manage life. that? Excellent. Best years of your life, so you've already yeah. finished it? No, no i still got okay. more to do. So I joined Hausa 2014. Okay. September 2014 is when I joined. So this is all adjacent to everything that you've done? So I was still at the restaurant at that time. Still at the restaurant? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I joined. I was taking um, Aqaid lessons okay. with, with an organisation. Um, and that's what gave me the love for, for Islamic study. Um, it's not just, you know, it's your religion, but what is your religion saying and why do you believe what your religion says? You believe in God. Do you really believe in God? Does God exist? Why do you believe in God? You say God is one. Why do you believe God is one? You believe in uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and other anbiya and so forth. Prove that they existed. Prove mm. that they were infallible. Mm. Uh, you believe in Imama. Mm. Where's the Imama in the Quran? Um, I prove Imama from the Quran. How does it logically make sense that after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa there are other authority figures and so forth. And that was just like, that wasn't even the door. That's, that's the gate to the right. pathway to the door. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. And then from there, I was like, you know, this is really interesting. I'd really like to get more involved and understand more. So you get this thirst for learning. Cool. And then that's how it happened. Cool. Now something came to my mind, um, and this is just a disclaimer to the to, to the audience as well. If you have kids that are watching, um, I would either close their ears um, or or I don't know, do something. Because basically the topic right now is a bit more uh, adult in the sense that there was a topic that you chose, I believe, okay. um, sex and Islam. 
<laughs> with um, with uh, so uh, Dr. Said Amman Akshwani. The legendary and, Dr. Said Amman Akshwani. Obviously, the, yeah. these, these topics are necessary. Yes. Um, so, so talk us talk us through that that topic. How, how it did was it go? a great honor to be part of that show. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the highlight of my career. What launched my career, <laughs> arguably. Uh, yeah. Um, sex and Islam. <laughs> I tell you know what I tell you what happened. Okay. So just calm down. It's, it's no, all right. No, it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. You tell me. You tell me that excited. It's fine. No, no, because I give you the background of what happened. Oh, today. okay. Tell me. I tell, tell me. you everything that happened. Yeah, tell me. So first of all, Jabbar used to present the show. Who's Jabbar? Uh, ja you don't know Jabbar? No. Uh, he's um, Iranian Jabbar. Uh, short. Oh, one of your old colleagues at Imam Hussein TV. Anyway, okay, cool. Jabbar used to run. Uh, he yeah. won the old colleagues at Imam Hussein TV. Yeah. He used to be um, the main host. Yeah, I don't know, but okay, yeah. Second season, they're looking for somebody else. I was kind of like pushed into it. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I mean, I'll are you pushed a lot into a lot of stuff here? Imam Hussein TV. But for this one, but for this one, it seems I'm like yeah, it's, right. So we're doing. You really got pushed into this one, didn't you? No, no, no. no. I've been uh. pushed in before. This I was like the, it, this was like the fourth, fourth episode or something. Third episode, if I remember. Okay. So, say that Amar's topic for his show live in London uh, was Rasad al Hakuk Imam Sajjad's Treaty of Rights. Yeah. And then there's the rights of um, the private part. Okay. Is one of the rights in, yep. in, in that treaty. Yeah. So before the show, say that Mars, they were sat over there on, on the set. I'm there going through everything. And then he's like, listen, we're going all out. We're going the all out. Thing. I'm there with my clipboard like, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, are you sure this is like allowed? Like, okay. He's like, we're going all Again, out. Again, disclaimer to the audience, la, la haya afiddin. Okay, so these topics that were discussed, I'm sure they were discussed in full seriousness. Um, uh, and, and some of these topics and some of these issues are, are obviously quite serious and they are needed, it's on a need to know basis. We need to know about these stuff, but tell us more. So please. I'm like, I'm like, okay. And then, and then the boss comes and he's like, listen, if you want to be a lecturer in the future, you have to discuss these things. Oh, you so, can't be so, shy around so, it. So, 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 so we got the, the okay. Yeah, we got the okay, from the, okay from, the well. from the top. And I was just like, uh, all right. And so he went in. And then, and then we did the show. Now, if you watch the show back, there's uh, at the beginning, you can have to do the introduction. Okay. Right, so I'm doing the introduction and I'm like, chapter three. This is live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is, is live. live. This was live. Oh, wow. So I'm there doing, doing the, the introduction. I'm like, it's like, welcome to Live in London. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah. Uh, you know, the treaty, or oh, sorry, the, guarding the private parts and the rights of the private parts. And if you listen to the, the thing, you can hear under his breath, is like, sexual organs. <laughs> He wanted me to say sexual organs, right? right? The right, rights of the right, sexual right, organs. Right, 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 right. So uh, I, I kept saying private parts. And the thing is, on a live show, um, you're in a zone, and if you get put off, then you're going to start making mistakes. Yeah. So you've got to stay focused and you've got to stay yeah. like, you know, uh, committed. So yeah. I, I just kept going. I was blocking out everything that was being said. And that's why I carried on saying private parts. But you could, if you could watch the show again, you can hear him saying yeah, sexual yeah. organs, like yeah, telling me yeah. to say sexual yeah. organs, don't say private parts. So yeah, that was a show, and then there's okay, a... Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, see, you seem like, no, I wouldn't say a, a reserved or a shy person, because once you get to know you, you're quite extrovertic, right? <laughs> but rumour has it that you didn't do part two of the programme. No. Why not? I got kicked off. You got kicked off? Yeah. Okay. Why'd you get kicked off? So, someone needed a job. <laughs> someone else needed a go. Someone else needed a job. <laughs> someone else needed a job. <laughs> Shout out to John Okay, fine. So it wasn't because you were shy or you were nervous or you were. No, that was. Argue, I think. No, no, that was, I didn't do the part two. That was. Um, Someone else. No, no, no. That, that show, it was, I think it's one of the most viewed shows throughout the whole of. Uh, I wonder why. Sheer YouTube uh, I wonder channels. Why. I wonder um, why. And then I, I think it was a new season or something, and it's just about. They wanted to change. Mm -hmm. And with Live in London, you'll see. I would say that Marshall, um, they can't really replace Sayyid Amar, he's, he's irreplaceable. He's the main so there, yeah. um, they replaced, they changed the, uh, the hosts. hosts just to liven it up a bit, give it a bit of a change, give it a okay. new angle and so forth. Cool. So it was, my uh, innings was over. You were a sports fan? Cricket, obviously. Depends. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I watch cricket. Sorry, I didn't mean to be stereotypical. Uh, but no, cricket, uh, it's, it's, yeah. yes, 100% <laughs> I watch cricket. Um, county cricket or more international? International. You see, I know my stuff here. I, 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 I did my <laughs> research on, on county cricket. County cricket. Cr cricket, yeah. Yeah, cricket. <laughs> so, I, I, um, yeah. believe it or not, I, I actually have, uh, I do watch England play a lot. Yeah? Yeah, I do watch you England cricket. You support them or, do, or one Pakistan play? Bit of Pakistan. both. Like, it's, it's Pakistan because of my mum and dad. 
Okay. But I, because I live here, yeah. and I think I, sh I should show a little bit of loyalty to our boys. Nice. And our boys do play good cricket. England do play very good yeah. cricket. Yeah, yeah, they won something recently, right? They won the 2020 World Cup uh, a couple of years back. Okay. About four years ago, I think. Yeah. All right. Fine. And they were number one do you recently. Play? Do I play? Mm. Used to. Not at any high level, just in the park. Mm. Hardball, though. And uh, football? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Why do you sound a bit nervous about it? <laughs> <laughs> I know nervous. where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly where this is going. So typically within All our right, community, wait, 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 typically within our communities, it's it's Man United, Liverpool, <laughs> um, Arsenal. That's no, the main Arsenal's three that we right. that, that we grew up in yeah. or grew up with. Um, you were born in Liverpool, so how comes you didn't support Liverpool? My second team is Everton. Your second team is Everton. Yeah. Okay. So who's your first team? Fulham. <laughs> Why? Fulham. I have been going down to Fulham. Uh, since I was 18. Okay. So I went down to the matches. Really? First game I went to was Fulham Wigan. Uh, I don't know if you remember Amir Zaki. He was the striker, like Egyptian striker. This is Amir Zaki? Yeah, before. No, I remember Mido. Was a, Mido was at Spurs at the time. He went to, he was at Fulham for a bit, no? Mido at Fulham? No. Tarapt was, sorry. Tarapt was, Tarapt yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. We, had, we had Andy Johnson up top, Jimmy you Bullard. Did, yeah. Um, I, th I think Zamora, Zamora probably just came in. Uh, Mark Schwartz was in goal. Yeah. But that was that season. Yeah, the guy with the red head. Redhead. Ryan Babel? No. No, no, no. Ryan Babel was Liverpool. Risa? No, 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 no. Not redhead, but he, 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 was, he was ginger. Sid, no, not Sidwell. Sidwell, Stephen Sidwell. Was it Sidwell? Yeah, that was, later. that was later. Oh, was it later? They, they okay. all came later. Okay. So no one really is... cares about Fulham, so that's why I'm just like... Oh, right, I mean... Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, cool. So you, why, why Fulham? Because you, you live there? Uh, yeah, I live in West oh, London. Okay, you live in West London. So it takes me... If I drive to Fulham, it's about 20 minutes, 25 okay. minutes. And, and off, after the pandemic, you'll, you'll be going back to... Oh, I, I have a membership with them. So I've only been a season ticket holder once. That was after... Okay, so this was, this was the dilemma. Yeah. Do I go to the Europa League final where we're playing Atletico Madrid right, in Hamburg? Yeah, if you Fulham don't remember, no. 2010, we made it to the Europa League final. So, um, yeah, it's, been, it's, been, it's been quite a journey, um, mm -hmm. Said Mohsin, all the way from, from Hausa and to um, the restaurant, um, Imam Hussein TV. The Imam Hussein charity, of course, they do some fantastic work, so, so um, no, no belittling their, 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 their projects. And so, yeah, look, we're gonna go to a small break, Sayyid Mohsin. Um, after that, you're gonna still be here because we're gonna I have some so. fun and games. Um, and yeah, so hopefully uh, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be a good time. So, dear viewers, um, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Um, is it believing? But don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, inshallah. We'll say wrestling and we'll have some fun again. <laughs> but from me and the team here at Imam Hussein TV, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Now, a lot goes into producing the shows that you love here on Imam Hussein TV. It may be half an hour for you, but it's hours for us. We have many factors to consider when producing our shows. Time, cost, set design, sourcing speakers and guests. It takes us about an hour to film, three hours to edit, two hours to render, and you, well, you watch it in 30 to 40 minutes. Hours just for 30 minutes. What is the I Am Husseini show? Well, it's a show that provides you, the dear viewers, a gateway, a window, a pathway, whatever you want to call it, to visit Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam and Abel Fadl Abbas alayhi salam at the comfort of your own home. I am a host at the Ahkam SOS. It is a show which entails with people sending in the Ahkam questions, which me and Sheikh Ali Ma'ash discuss and give them their answers. My show is Her Thoughts, which is a show featuring a rotating panel of female presenters discussing a range of topics from a female perspective. Verses of Love aims to be the post majlis majlis. It tries to bring the community together to continue engaging with the Masa'ib of Ahlul Bayt I've had the honour of working and directing and producing documentaries for the Imam Hussein TV3 channel. So the Late Night Show is essentially it's a talk show. I had guests all the way from self-development experts, media experts, sales directors. My show, Live in London, it needs no introduction with world-renowned scholar, Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani. 
Sometimes it's difficult for us to do the research. It takes us sometimes a week, two weeks to find answers for certain questions. Sometimes the questions don't even get answered and we have to roll them on until next week. But I guess this is a problem that is actually, you know, a good headache and worth having. One of the main difficulties which we come across is um, getting female participants to participate on the show. After the show, when we get the emails coming through from the women um, in our society, in our community, and it really shows us that women relate more to a female speaker. Among some of the difficulties I'd say is the late nights with a pretty hectic schedule for all the reciters who have probably come from one or two majalis beforehand. Sometimes you just have this magical moment where the reciter says a line that connects and lets you release all of that emotion, which helps you connect with Aba Abdullah and therefore with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I filmed these documentaries during COVID. That always stays with me because I think that was a difficulty that I thought I will face. Yet I think Imam al-Hussein sallallahu alayhi opened so many doors and made everything so easy for me. How much can we laugh and joke on an Islamic channel? Especially when the channel is associated to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But the best part of the show is actually, it's the fun part of it. So that's, that's the games. The best thing about this show, you can actually speak and discuss and actually voice their opinions and questions to Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani. We've come so far, yet still have so much more to achieve. Support us so that we can support your children in bringing them more knowledge and content. Because Imam Hussein TV is your gateway to Karbala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Of Imam Hussein TV, uh, you are watching the late night show with myself, Ali Fadl, as your host. Today, we've heard about the, the weird and the wonderful life of Sayyid Muhsin Shah, um, ranging from opening up his own restaurant all the way to going to Hauze um, and then shying away from some very, very um, awkward questions with Sayyid Amman Akhshawani. Um, so, we've heard a lot about him, uh, and today we're going to have some fun with you, Sayyid Mohsin, if that's okay. Um, excuse the pun, ladies and gentlemen, but um, we're going to have some fun. So, I, um, the, the, the challenge for you today, and this is going to be a challenge for all the guests as well, um, you're going to, I think it's called Chinese Whispers, but okay. we're going to put some headphones on your ears, right? Interesting. Um, you're going to play a track. If you've got your phone with you, I take out your phone, it's indeed. fine. Um, we're gonna, you're going to play any track just to make sure it's loud in your ear. I'm going to. Say some words and you have to guess what those words are. Okay. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay, cool. Round of applause. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. Uh, this is for you, Sayyid. If you can you. put that on look. your head and that will go into your phone. Uh, I have a list of five words. Hold yeah. On. So, just, to, just for the dear viewers uh, at home, the way this game works is essentially I am going to say five sentences essentially or, or, or five phrases and um, Mohsin is going to have to guess what I am saying but in his in his ears is going to be something that's playing um, I hope you are playing something right play something I'm playing okay I'm going to test something sorry okay. I'm going to okay pause it pause what pause pause it yeah. pause. <laughs> okay pause. are you paused yeah I am indeed you can hear me I can hear okay. you just about play the track playing the track just, sh no, I'm, I'm playing the track. Cool. And that's, Phrase number one. Ready? <laughs> Wait. Uh, um, uh, are you going to start? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ready? All right. Okay, cool. Number one. First, first sentence word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there okay. a film, book? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Number one. Number one. Yeah. The Late Night Show. The candle choked. <laughs> what? So we've got so far the candle choked. No. Okay. The late night show. The late night show. Yeah. Well done. Well done. The late night show. Okay. Number two. Number two. Number two. Mohsin Shah. It's Mohsin Shah. <laughs> okay, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Fine. Number three. Number three. Ramadan Mubarak. Some I heard Thamani. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. sorry, that's what I saw. <laughs> oh. I saw Thamani. Thamania. Yeah, that's what I saw from your lips. Okay, I'll do it again. Again. 
رمضان مبارك ابو رمضان مبارك اني 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 ورد ذات كمس اقول هي اقول هي اوكي وان مور تايم رمضان مبارك اوكي رمضان مبارك يس يو جوت ات رمضان مبارك ان نمبر 5 ريدي لبيك يا حسين لمنت اوف حسين اسوء كلوز 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 Oh, La Baker. Yes. yes. Well done, well done, Mohsin. Thank you very much. Hey. Now, hey. we're going we're gonna to flip the script. Mohsin, give it to me. We're going to oh. flip the script now. You give me this. Uh, I hope you like the sound of your voice. Oh, is it me? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what did you put on? Just a lot more. Okay, cool. Wow, these are amazing. I can't hear a word. Do you have your sentences? Yeah. Uh, are you ready? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Is it playing? No. It's playing. Okay. So, first number one. Run. Don't leave me! <laughs> don't leave me! Don't leave me! I'll cut you! <laughs> oh, okay. So, first one was don't leave me. Wait, wait, wait. So, I got that one, yeah? Yeah, you got okay, it. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll go number two, yeah? Okay. Just in case I don't wait, get wait, to sorry, see sorry. you again. Again. <laughs> again, 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 again. In case I don't see you again. Do it again. In case I don't see you again. Uh, one more time, slowly. Some, yeah, okay. one more time, one more time. In case. In case. I don't. I saw. Get. To. To. See you. More. And I see again. you. Again. Again. Yeah. In case. I, I say again. In case. I. I. Don't. Don't care. Get. I don't get. Catch. <laughs> I can't. I don't get. To, oh, I can't. Do I don't get to see you again. I don't get to see you again. <laughs> you can't use the lyrics <laughs> higher. Come on. <laughs> That's not fair. All right, cool. Let's go for number three. Is it going to be lyrics? Mm, sort of, but not with okay, yours. Fine. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. Let's see if you can get this one. Uh, how does it go? Oh, okay. You'll never walk alone. Do you have. I don't have, no. Okay, do it again, do it again. You never walk alone. In your case, you'll always walk alone. No? No, I, I Okay, just, last one, time, one, last one, time. One, one. You'll never walk alone. Oh, you'll never walk alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that one. Bad, 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 bad. All right, go for number four. Um, okay. Ya Hussein. Come on. Did you get it? Yeah, yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm not playing the track. I don't so. know where you go. <laughs> I wasn't playing it's the track cheap. so I can hear it. No, I'm joking. I'm playing it now. I can't hear you. It's all right. Oh, oh, let me think of something else. What we can do. Um, oh, I know. Here we go. Morning, Baraka. What's my name? Your name is Ali Fadl. Morning, Baraka. This is really hard. This is really, last really one, hard. Last one, last one. Okay, okay, last one. I'll give you some clues, all right? All right. Uh, morning, morning. Morning. Baraka. Morning, Baraka. Yeah. 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 Morning, Baraka. I, got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Fantastic, well done. This is your phone? Please. This is your phone? Thank you. Uh, and this comes off my ear, and we'll use this for our next guest. Cool. Um, say Mahsin Shah, everyone, well done. Thank you. Cool. Uh, say Mahsin, on a more kind of like a serious note, um, you know, the, the, there are in terms of, you know, the Shia community. I think there's a question here that I, I really like. Um, you, you're, you're quite a prominent member in, within, the, within, within the community. Lo loads of people know you, alhamdulillah. Um, from what you've seen in terms of outreach, in terms of media work, are we on the right track or is there, is there, is there stuff that's lacking in the media? I think we're on the right track. But there's more to be done. There's a lot more to be done. Mm. Unfortunately, as you are fully aware, a lot of these Shia TV channels and Muslim channels in general are crowdfunded. There's mm. not one sponsor or one uh, organization that's pumping all the money in and they can go and do what they want. These TV channels, we don't have sales and revenue. We don't mm. sell anything. You know, it's just expenditure upon expenditure. Whether it's like, you know, a set like this is going to cost like five to ten thousand pounds. You know, the equipment that we use for 4K cameras and so forth, that's another like, you know, eight thousand pounds and so forth. And then there's rent for the channel, 
uh, hear the rent on the, of the property and then rent for having it broadcasted on television yep. and so forth. So it's a slow progress. We need to make more films, feature films, documentaries. Mm. Uh, we need to go out. We need more. We need more sheer YouTubers. We don't have any sheer YouTubers whatsoever, mm. you know, and, and, and sheer influencers mm. that can actually be uh, not just beneficial for our community, but like role models for our society mm. um, who can easily access. So we can send them emails and, and you know messages and stuff like that and get get some sort of knowledge back in any field, whether it's to do with law or yeah. to do with history and yeah. or to do with theology, uh, even other things like media today is not just turning the telly on and watching something. Yeah, media today is learning. Media today is research. Media today is current affairs and being up to date with what's going on in the world. Media is always and always has been communication. Okay. Communication is one of the most vital tools that we have in our community Absolutely. in terms of passing on the knowledge and the lessons and the teachings of Rasulullah okay. sallallahu alaihi wa and with the Ahlul Bayt. Furthermore, communication is what we need to access the problems in our community such as mental illness, mm. such as bullying, such as poverty. Um, and further other ignorances as well within our communities that we need to, to fight. Media is one of the biggest tools that we can use to communicate those. 100%. Um, you know, and I, I've seen on other channels as well where the NHS have even for the vaccines and so forth and that yeah. have approached scholars and so forth <coughs> to give and tell the communities and inform them of the vaccine and how it works and so forth and also of the self testing. So if they can understand that communities require um, information to be passed on to them via media, surely we can learn and surely we can evolve and progress and right. we can develop. So tell us about some of the documentaries that you've done mm -hmm. with the channel. I think that one, one, one that springs to mind is a, there's an English man that you took to yeah. Karbala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk us through that. So uh, shout out to my friend. Uh, he got in contact with me. So Martin, uh, he was on, uh, is it called TripAdvisor, I think it's called. Okay. He, put, he needed help getting a visa for Iraq. Why? He wanted to visit. Why? Because he read a book on Imam Ali. Mashallah. Okay. He got introduced to Imam Ali on his travels in Iran. All right. So he started researching, reading up about him, <coughs> and then from there he wanted to um, visit his his shrine. He wanted to go visit his grave, and he wanted to visit Iraq because he hasn't been there. Was there something peculiar about him? What was peculiar about him was that he he was. First of all, he was a Fulham fan as well, and a season okay. ticket holder. Away from that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which was yeah. we we talk a lot about football. We. <laughs> I'm still in contact with him, by the way. Um, secondly, what's peculiar about it, he was like typical working class. Um, you look at him, slim man. Obviously, he's got illnesses. He's got cancer. Oh, he's okay. fighting other, other diseases as well. Mm. Um, so he's very, very ill. Uh, his immune system is nearly non-existent. Um, you know, I think raw meat would kill him if he was to wow. eat it. That's how low his immune system is. So how did he survive in Iraq? In Iraq, he stayed away from the water. Wow. Uh, uh, I remember he used to get an apple. Uh, he used to cut off the skin and eat the inside. He wouldn't even touch the skin. Mm. Um, all the meat had to be fully cooked for him to eat and, and, and uh, he couldn't, he, I remember him telling me he can't even have a kebab, right, because um, it's, uh, the hands have been on it and it's, and it's not cooked fully. Uh, so he wasn't aware that uh, if, if all the bacteria would have been yeah. um, killed off and so, everything. So how did he feel when he first so he got, he got, saw the he, he got, um, so he's, he's asking for a visa. He's trying, he needs help with a visa. Okay. Um, my mate saw it. He got in contact with me and said, look, this guy needs help with a visa. You go to Arvain uh, almost every year. Can you help him out? Uh, I said, yeah, no worries. Uh, give me his phone number. I'll, I'll talk to him. I spoke to him. He told me about this and that. I said, you know what? For you as a non-Muslim <coughs> and you want to go visit Imam Ali, let's take you on Arbaeen time where it's busy. Mm. We will take you to Imam Hussein because he knows about the Battle of Karbala. He yeah. knows about this. He knows about the Umayyads and Bani Hashim and, and, and their you know, conflict. So he, I said that we're going to take you there. So he's got a bit of background. He knows, yeah, he's read a lot of books. Fantastic. So he fully knows everything. Taking him to Iraq, um, you know, we saw that his visa and everything and he came. Uh, not, he wasn't one of them guys that are like, also culture shock because he's been traveling, traveling for okay, a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he went to the, he went Turkey back, back in the 60s and stuff like mm. that. So he's really familiar with you know third world and people undeveloped countries and so forth, especially war torn countries. Mm. So he was really really um, patient. Um, he couldn't walk all the way. It was a bit of a struggle for him at times, but he just wanted somewhere clean and somewhere some clean food. That's what he wanted. He mm. wasn't really for the luxury life or anything like that. He just wants somewhere clean and he can get clean food and he'll be okay. And in Iraq, they loved him. Really? You could imagine this white European English looking geezer. Yeah. He's got all these tattoos and yeah. everything. He was wearing Fulham tops nonstop throughout the whole really? trip. And he's walking and everyone wants to take a picture with him. Everyone wants to talk to him. Where, where are you from? Where, you know what I mean? Uh, what brings you here? Um, on, on the way to uh, Karbala Khan Inus, 
Um, we stayed, I think his name was Abu Hussein. What did you say? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> halfway. It was the halfway point cool. It is cool that, but usually like, um, I know Iraqis are familiar with that kind of term, but you're like Khan and like it was absolutely normal the way you pronounced it. No, I'm just oh, saying it was amazing. That was pretty good. So, yeah, uh, halfway, we're there with a guy <laughs> called Abu Hussein. He took us in. The guy doesn't speak much English at all. I remember staying at his house with Martin. Um, luckily his name we, is Martin, by the way, this guy. His name's Martin. Okay. Um, and um, the channel covered his it not covered his. I was in, the channel uh, covered his his expenses. Uh, no, 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 no. His um, trip. His, his journey, journey. His pilgrimage. His journey. His pilgrimage. So yeah. they were filming him wherever we he went. We filmed him. Okay. From uh, London to Beirut. From Beirut to Iraq. Uh, we landed in Najaf. We did Najaf. Did the walk to Karbala, and we, we did we, he do the whole walk? Three days? Four days? No, he, he can't do oh, that. He, he couldn't, couldn't walk. That. He walked in total probably about three hundred poles. Okay, yeah. So is, we walk a bit, awesome. rest, get a cab further down, walk a bit, rest, mm -hmm. get a cab further down. Like so that. what was the overall impression on Arba'in? Because there's a he, massive he difference. He wants to go back. Excuse me, there's a massive difference between Arba'in Ziyara and kind of non-event non Ziyara. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Arba'in season is something special yeah. in particular. No, it is, but it's also quieter. Non, non, uh, non, it, it, sometimes it's overwhelming for, for new people it to come be. and visit. Uh, not f um, what was unfortunate was we didn't go Arba'in peak Arba'in time. Okay. We did everything with seven days before Arba'in. Right? It would have been so fairly before, empty, yeah. It, fairly. No, you, th you think that. Yeah, no. It wasn't. It was busy. Yeah, you can go touch the shrine. You know, in the Arba'in time, it's impossible. It's impossible, so I'm right? saying, yeah. You could get to the shrine and touch it with a mm. bit of struggle. But uh, it was just as busy. On the way, there were Mawakib open. And a lot of them were setting up. So it, it's not a case of, oh, um, you know, it's empty, it's dead. It's not. And that's the time a lot of the natives go and do the Arba'in walk and to allow space and time for, um, you know, the foreigners and mm -hmm. uh, for them to come in and so forth. Cool. So there's many documentaries that you do. Um, how, if, if, if for the viewers that are interested, they wanted to see, how, how would I go about watching Most them? of the documentaries are uploaded onto YouTube on Imam Hussein TV3 uh, YouTube channel. I, I believe there's a section of documentaries and some of my work is there. Okay, on YouTube? On YouTube. Okay, fantastic. Anything else? Instagram, social media? Not necessarily, maybe <coughs> some promos you'll see on Imam Hussein TV3's uh, Instagram and, and Facebook. Cool. But the documentaries, the majority of my ones, and other documentaries done by other producers and so forth, who've done excellent work over the years. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? So you, you've done quite a bit of controversial topics, haven't you? Yeah. It's, again, disclaimer to the viewers. Um, <laughs> What's the next one? Uh, and, and society. Um, but, then, but then you've also got some documentaries about... Um, uh, CBD oil, I believe, yeah, yeah. and and, uh, and cannabis, marijuana. Indeed, what's, what's, indeed. What's what? Talk us through that. Why? Why? why so, this topic? big shout out to Hussein Zada because he's the one that really has done a lot of work. He put just as much effort as I did into this into the production. Mm. Um, I wonder why. We wanted to discuss <laughs> marijuana, cannabis, uh, because. Uh, in the last year no, or so. No, it's an important subject, actually, yeah. Not just important, but if you look at the last year or so, it's actually becoming accepted and adopted into society. Uh, Legality-wise, the laws changed. Mm. It used to be an A-class drug, it's a C-class drug. CBD has been introduced into uh, the, the, you know, the medical, mainstream medical um, supplies. And, and, but isn't, uh, there, isn't there nothing wrong with CBD? CBD... As well, opposed to THC. Because at the beginning, there was an issue. As you, you, know your, <laughs> yeah. you know your science <laughs> and your pharmacist. No, my wife is. Uh, you're, so, uh, you're watching Breaking Bad or something. <laughs> oh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, recently, in the last year or two years, mm -hmm. uh, weed becoming legal and having weed um, cannabis dispensaries all over America, uh, especially in Los Angeles. Mm. New York, I think, was last. The new, new prime minister, uh, prime minister, not president, Biden, he just legalized it in New York. Okay. Last month, I think he did it in March. All right. Yeah. So, slowly in the West, especially in the UK and the US, it's becoming more and more uh, legal. Um, people are claiming it to help with epilepsy, mm. um, helping it with um, Parkinson's anxiety. disease, anxiety, um, and so forth. So I think in the UK, it was, a, it was a, a mother of a child. She was arguing the case for her to administer CBD oils to help her child who was having epileptic fits mm. and so forth. He was having something like 100... So what's your view on this? I'm a bit confused. My view? Yeah. My view is not, it's not important. <laughs> what do you mean? No, I'm saying, you what's, your, know, what's, what what's your take on this? Because it seems like you're, you're take... attacking CBD. Uh, as, in, as in CBD, you know, according to, to, to the government and science or, or, or scientific articles, you know, they've, they've, they've argued that CBD is actually good for you. Not good for you, as in it's, it's, it's a good healing um, drug. 
juice, liquid, whatever you mean. But your take on it is like, well, no, it shouldn't be. Not necessarily. I mean, my position is that, um, I mean, if you want to use it for medicinal purposes or even recreational, I mean, you can do what you want with it. There is an Islamic stance to it. Which is? Which is discussed in the documentary, if you uh -huh. guys watch it. And the Islamic stance is that if it's prescribed by a doctor for medicinal purpose... CBD or the full marijuana? This is uh, or marijuana. Cannabis. Marijuana. Okay. Then it, it can be consumed. Uh, CBD, as far as I'm aware, speaking to scholars um, who are representatives of certain maraja, especially Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, Hafidullah, um, it is CBD oil is perfectly permissible to oh, use. Oh, is it? Yeah. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Uh, okay, cool. Um, all right, fine. Uh, last, I guess lastly, it's, it's just around your, your experiences with the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, the fa what's your favorite thing about working for the channel? It seems like, it seems like from, from, from an outside, from an outside, it seems like there's a good vibe around this place. As you know, there's a lot of camaraderie. I think, I think what I like about the channel, uh, which is really nice, is that um, it's very, very accommodating to my Shia faith. So Ashura, I get off. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, Eid, I get off. We have Jama'at Salah here. Um, do I know the boy you guys have yeah, every Friday? Yeah, do I know the boy every Friday morning? Um, if, for example, Ramadan time, you know, our, our timings have changed. We're very flexible, uh, and I really like how we. I, really, I don't know if you noticed, but we're one of the mainstream channels. A lot of people come to us for help, mm. brother, and we're, we're struggling ourselves, but they, they look up to us as Good. we're one of the mainstream channels. Um, and uh, I just love how... The thing is, we're in London, but we make, it, we make you feel like you're in Karbala. Really? Yeah. And then when we go to Karbala, we feel right at home. You, you could have fooled yeah. me, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that's yeah. nice, that's nice, that's nice. Uh, any last words? It's a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, Thank really, you really appreciate me. it. So, really there's a couple nice of quick fire questions, oh, which wow. I don't have. He's going to bring it to me now. A couple of quick fire questions. I guess this is nice just to get a bit more of understanding around Sayyid Mustan Shah and what he likes, what he doesn't like. Okay, cool. You ready? All right, let's go. So, some quick fire questions for All you. Right. All right. Pakistani food or Afghani food? Oh, oh, bit of both. No, no, you have to give me one answer. That's the whole point. Afghani food. Has to be quick. Has Afghani? Afghani? Has to be Afghani. Wow. Najaf Afghani. or Karbala? Karbala. Phone call or text? Phone call. Nice. Toast or eggs? Eggs. Aren't they both supposed to go together? Uh, anyway. Do your questions. <laughs> anyway. Um, iOS or Android? Big one. iOS. iOS. Cake or pie? Oh, that's a good question, man. Pie. Work hard or play hard? Work hard, play harder. <laughs> Shower. <laughs> Trainers or sandals? Trainers. Good. Money or free time? Free time. Sweet or salty popcorn? Sweet. Pen or pencil? Pen. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi Max. Honesty or others' feelings? Whoa, this is a good one. <clears throat> so if there's an issue with someone... Yeah, on honesty. Honesty? Yeah. Okay, good. Forget their feelings. That's interesting. <laughs> that is very interesting. So, uh, coffee or tea? You're not a coffee, so it has to be a tea. I don't drink tea. You don't drink tea or coffee? No chai karak? No. Winter or summer? Summer. Mac or PC? Mac. Classical art or modern art? Whatever that means. Modern art. Working alone or working in a team? Working alone. Working. <laughs> I don't like Seriously? to be bothered. I don't, I'm no way, in my zone. Amazing. Don't bother me, man. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, working uh, dine in or delivery? Dine in. Dine in, <laughs> of course. Jumper or hoodie? Hoodie. 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 Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, look, say Mas and Shah, really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, Thank you we'd love to have you on the show. Uh, um, I doubt we're going to have you on the show, but uh, <laughs> honestly, honestly, it's been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, that brings um, to a close our first show, uh, the late night show with myself, Ali Fadl. I hope you enjoyed it. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Imam Hussain TV3 wants to improve their content to ensure that we meet our goal which is to encourage, inform and educate the Shia around the world about the teachings from the Holy Household, the Ahlul Bayt. For us to do this, we need your help. Complete our survey 
and tell us which programs you like, what you'd like to see more of, and what we could do better. The survey takes less than a minute, but you could be within a chance to win a ring made from the marble from the holy shrine of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam. Imam Hussein TV3, your gateway to Karbala.